The fact that Sydney Sweeney's shitty jeans might not be the only way she inherited so many damn problems is a weird sciencey fact that boggles my mind. While genetics themselves are a hugely complicated biological code, their function is fairly simple. They are basically just the IKEA instruction manual for all living things. DNA and RNA are what tell your body how to get built. And for some people, like Stephen Miller, the instructions were not very good. And the people who write these instructions are your mom and your dad. They both contribute about half the pages to the manual. And unfortunately for most of MAGO, when your parents are also siblings, they don't have a whole lot of ideas on how to think out of the box when writing that manual, largely because they're illiterate. And then you get really bad instructions because they're basically just bad photocopies of their parents because they plagiarized because, again, they're illiterate. But anyway, I'm getting off track. The DNA and RNA, the genetics you get from your parents, are what give you all of your discernible traits. Good, bad, or otherwise, right? Or, or at least so we thought. Before we get to that, a couple decades ago, researchers finally managed to map the entire human genome, which is like six billion pairs or something like that. Side note, this is apparently a very interesting tree because they have been they've been here staring at it for a while. Well, except for Harley. I guess it's not his programming. Anyway, mapping the human genome has been one of the greatest accomplishments in, in human history, and it has had profound effects on humanity. One of those profound effects is scientists' and doctors' abilities to test for genetic markers that tell us if we are predisposed to certain diseases and illnesses. And that is monumental because it allows for advanced screenings and early screenings that helps people identify cancer and all kinds of diseases and illnesses that would otherwise have been caught far too late, and that has saved countless lives. However, some diseases and disorders and traits in general have been a ghost in the genetic machine. Things like type 2 diabetes and Alzheimer's, for example, don't have specific genetic markers. However, they very much appear inheritable, and this has baffled doctors and scientists for some time. If you end up with a condition that all of your previous generations had, or many of them had, and the cause does not seem to be environmental, there should be a genetic anomaly or marker in your DNA or RNA that shows that specific trait that causes it. Well, worms, not unlike those crawling around in RFK's brain, may have just just told us the secret. Researchers at the University of Toronto were doing cancer studies using hermaphroditic worms. These are worms that don't have Republicans telling them what gender they're supposed to be so they can choose themselves. They possess both male and female reproductive organs. They can reproduce asexually. That's not really important here to the story except for during the course of this study, uh, all the subsequent generations of worms kept becoming more and more female, culminating with 100% of them becoming female and sterile. So researchers stopped using them to research cancer and started using them to research whatever the fuck just happened. And the first thing they did was inspect the genetic code because there had to be something inheritable that was causing them to become more and more female. But there was no anomalies in the DNA or RNA that provided an answer. And then they found that the culprit causing all of these worms to turn female was amyloid proteins. Proteins are like a piece of paper and they're folded very, very specifically like origami into a very specific structure that serves a specific purpose. And one slight change in that fold changes the entire structure and function. And when folded improperly, they can cause cause serious problems, not only because that one protein isn't doing its job properly, but because it'll start vampirizing neighboring proteins to fuck up how they get folded too. This is the cause for a lot of neurological disorders like Donnie's dementia or Alzheimer's because all of those misfolded proteins turn into plaque in the brain and fuck up how it functions. But it was still always thought that those incorrect origami folding instructions that turned your swan into a crumpled ball would have had to been transmitted via the genetic code. But watching these worms, it turns out that's not the case. These amyloid proteins can physically hitch a ride on the sperm or egg. Then their fucked up folding is just floating around in there and eventually, often what happens is another protein didn't do its own homework and tries copying the amyloids homework. Which, you know, I get it, can't blame them. Six billion pairs in the instruction manual, TLDR, man. Just just copy the guy next to you. Unfortunately, if you do that and the guy next to you is a fucking idiot and he didn't do it correctly, when you go all Autobots assemble, you turn into a broken toaster rather than a fighting superhero robot. I'm losing the analogy, guys. I'm sorry. Point being that this is a brand new discovery in inheritable traits that we had no idea about. And all we've really studied this in so far is these worms, so we really don't know how it affects humans. But they have found amyloid proteins attached to human eggs. And that means that this is a very real possibility that that's the answer to all of these inheritable diseases and disorders that don't have genetic markers. And if that's the case, this could be the very first step in a massive breakthrough that could eradicate all kinds of diseases and neurological disorders like Alzheimer's. Because if they could find a way to stop the transfers of these proteins from parents to children, that may be a functional cure for some of the most devastating illnesses in society. And the fact that painfully protracted problems from your parents were potentially passed with problematic proteins, well, that is pretty mind-boggling.